Hi, I'm Taylor Garcia. This is Buckingham News Live at 5. Graham Roos, the university's filmmaker in residence, premiered his latest film, My Other Life, at the Radcliffe Center last week. Shot over the course of the year, the film followed nine Buckingham students in their creative lives and featured their poetry and music. Holly Knowles joined the red carpet crowd. The Radcliffe Centre saw the film My Other Life to be screened for the first time. This hour-long production looked into the poetic development of nine international students over the course of one year. This year-long production showed the changes in each individual student's growth to achieve confidence in their speech, performance and themselves. Graham Roos, creative artist in residence at the university, explained where his creativeness came from. My speciality is uh, poetry and performance and film. So I was wanting to do something that incorporated those elements, but rather than it being about me, I wanted to do something with the students. And the aim is to take students who might be a bit unconfident, put them up on the big screen and say, look at yourself, you're talented and you're beautiful. It's been a, a, a tough year, it's been a lot of hard work, uh, but it's been worth it. Not only was poetry a main focus in this production, some students chose to express themselves through the use of musical instruments. One student who was involved in the film performed a short poem for the audience at the screening. It was fun, it was very fun because um, Graham was so creative, so he really sort of brings out you, sort of says, express yourself, express yourself, and then, like, sort of let loose and you enjoy it. The film was extremely well received from the audience. Uh, I think it was really interestingly made and I like some, really like some of the poems. It was really funny. I know most of them in real life and I really like that. Graham Roos is hoping to repeat this production later on in the year. Uh, any budding uh, poets and performance poets who'd like to come and join my group, uh, we're going to be doing a show in London at some point uh, later in the year. With this personal story bringing in a wide audience, it has created a positive and memorable outcome. We hope to see more from Graham Roos in the future. Holly Knowles, Buckingham News. Robert Tyler, Lafay Fanboy and Mohamed Mabouf. These are the names of the students who want to be the next president of your student union. A week since the announcement of their nominations, the candidates have now fired up their campaign to full strength in anticipations of the hustings. Jalakata put on her best Paxman face and went to see how the candidates are planning on getting your vote. This week you may have seen your Facebook feed inundated with campaign posters for the upcoming elections. But with many still undecided about who to choose on Wednesday, we met the presidential candidates to find out why they think they deserve your vote. With hustings not until next week, the big question is, what makes you different? I have the experience. Being on the SE executive for almost five months now. I'm different because I'm the only one standing on a platform of transparency and increasing the democratic value of the students' union. I think dedication. Um, I mean, I can go into my dedication. I'm sure they are as though, but um, that's where I think it is. So, who do you think will vote for you? Um, at the end of the day, I'm hoping for all students to vote for me because the, what I'm, the message I'm trying to pass across is impact. Well, I'd hope that everyone votes for me. I'm offering a lot to a lot of different people, especially when it comes to funding for societies. I think people that uh, want a few changes around here. Make us some promises. I can promise to um, make sure that student needs are met. One thing I will promise is that the Students' Union will be a lot more transparent than it is at the moment, especially when it comes to finances. My dedication is that I think that's the biggest promise. The candidates have made their positions clear, and regardless of who you think is the right person for the job, by next week we will have a new Student Union president. We'll be bringing you all the coverage of Election Day and an exclusive interview with the newly appointed president. Jala Keda, reporting for Buckingham News. The revelations by American System Administrator Edward Snowden into how much information the National Security Agency in the U.S. and the GCHQ in the U.K. gather on us was the focus of a public lecture on Tuesday evening. David Green, a UOB alumni and senior staff attorney at the Electronic Frontier Foundation, a digital civil rights organization, examined how to balance the needs of security with our expectation of freedom. Let Leila Asadine caught up with him to find out how to achieve the Surveillance Balancing Act. 
New technologies are radically advancing our freedoms, but they are also enabling unparalleled invasions of our privacy. National and international laws have yet to catch up with the evolving need for privacy, so does technology make us feel more safe or more vulnerable? The Electronic Frontier Foundation fight for your privacy rights in the digital world. They are there to prevent abuse from state powers such as the NSA and GCHQ from illegally extracting your information. To what extent is our privacy in the digital world unsafe? What we've learned is that many governments all over the world are are collecting that information um, and it, you know they're, they're using it they say for good purposes and everything but it's uh, it's not really information that you have <coughs> that's really only your own. It's actually freely accessible. What is the EFF doing about defending our civil liberties? We sue the government, the US government, quite a bit, um, to try and stop surveillance programs and other government-created invasions of privacy. We have technologists who create privacy-enhancing tools. We also have an international team that uh, does advocacy work internationally. And you actually really need to make efforts to preserve your privacy, and then even then you can only be so sure that those efforts will be successful. You also have to respect people's integrity just to live in a society where they're not being surveilled all the time. So next time you choose to surf the internet, think twice as to who is watching. This is Leila Osadine for Buckingham News. In other news, once again Buckingham has entered the annual Best Kept Village competition run by the Campaign for the Protection of Rural England. The town last won the prize for Buckinghamshire in 2011. Chancellor Robin Stutchbury said that the council is replacing plants in the town centre, maintaining parks, and won't accept any deprivation of our environment. Hopefully Buckingham will come out victorious. So pick up your litter, keep the town clean, and help Buckingham win. The university's Nigerian Society organized a march today to show solidarity with the 276 female students who were kidnapped from their school in Nigeria by Boko Haram, an Islamic terrorist organization. The march saw students walk together in a show of defiance. It's to create awareness for everybody, you know, the whole world. Let us all come together and do something about it. Saturday, May 10th, saw a crafts fair come to Buckingham Community Center. Local craftspeople came together to sell their work with locally sourced goods and handmade products on sale. The fair intended to raise awareness of the inventive talent in the area. With a great turnout and happy customers, it certainly seemed to make people aware. We're completely used to the idea of giving blood to help an emergency. But what about when man's best friend needs a life-saving transfusion? Pet Blood Bank UK is a charity that provides national canine blood. With a quarter of the households in the UK owning a dog, the need for doggy donors is becoming ever more vital. Liv Marsden went to the session to find out more. We're all familiar with donating blood, but did you ever imagine that dogs have to go through the same process? I'm here at Andal Veterinary Surgery, where dogs like Harry are donating blood that can help save thousands of other dogs' lives. Many people have been shocked and surprised when I have told them about dog blood donation. So, what is it actually all about? Uh, the blood bank is all about animals coming to us um, and saving other dogs' lives, basically. Um, so when they come to us, um, they come here, it's a very positive environment for them. They're not made to do anything that they don't want to do. Um, and, you know, the, the, the owners are quite happy to bring them knowing that their dog is saving, saving other dogs' lives. When we get a unit of blood, that can actually save up to four other dogs. Harry's health checks were given the all clear, so he was ready to become a lifesaver and donate blood. I know we're going to pick you up. Okay. One, two, three. Good boy. Harry is a greyhound, and their size, calm disposition, and easy to find veins typically make them great patients. They also have the advantage of being unusually rich in red blood cells, which makes them the perfect blood donor. Five hundred and seventy grams are taken, which is just short of a pint. However, your dog must weigh more than 25 kilograms in order to do the donation, as a smaller dog would not be able to cope with the amount of blood taken. It's just worthwhile and, it, you know, it's, yes, it takes a little bit of time for the owner, um, you know, but a little bit of time, I'd, I think it's very valuable for the blood bank. Harry was certainly a trooper and hopefully he's made you see why this is such an important cause. So there's a lot of benefits for the dog and they're regularly checked and sometimes, you know, and it's all free. Um, and you know a lot of people can't always afford blood samples and things like that so it's great and that you know they're, they're checked every single time that they come here 
If you have a dog, why not register them so that one day their blood could be the lifeline for another doggy friend? Let's hope that the brave donors today are now relaxing at home, having their belly scratched and munching away on the bonio. This is Liv Marsden reporting for Buckingham News. Now over to sports with Leander Behrens. Thank you, Taylor. The University of Buckingham football team had their final game of the season last weekend against Dean Singer Athletic Reserves. Johnny Lee went to watch the last battle. The University of Buckingham Football Club played their final game of the season on Saturday against the team sitting directly below them in the table, this hangar. Playing in extremely windy conditions, the university side expect the fixture to be both frustrating and testing. In the first half an hour, both sides had equal opportunity to take the lead, but neither could use the win to their advantage. Gabriel Fayi came close early on, forcing a serve from the goalkeeper. Soon after, Dean's hunger had two quick corners. Both headers came close, but the result remained all square. On 35 minutes, the breakthrough came as the fullback played a long ball onto the striker, who squared the ball for the teammate to score. Dean's hunger's second goal came moments after as a long shot drifted over the goalkeeper in a moment of madness. Alex Biddle was forced to make a good serve to stop a third goal. Just before halftime, Ladi Labodi came close to score after an amazing run from the halfway line. The university side went into the second half optimistic, looking to salvage something from the game. Gabriel Fayi and Ladi Labodi pulled two quick goals back to set up a sense finish to the game. But the second scorer then handled the ball in the area to award this hunger the penalty and give them the chance to get the three point, and they did. Buckingham pushed hard for a third, but could not salvage a deserved point. 3 2, the final score. The University of Buckingham Football Club is likely to finish 11 on the table. However, if Cage Athletic wins their final game, Buckingham will drop to 12. We will confirm the final place in the next broadcast. This is Johnny Lee, Buckingham News. Badminton is one of the most popular sports at the university. Students and staff enjoy meeting and competing on Tuesdays and Wednesday. Kevin Molintwa went to see what got the players so hooked. With badminton proving to be one of the most popular sports at the university, just what is so appealing about the sport to other students? Well, actually, I've been playing badminton back home and I used to captain my school team, so I thought it's a good way to start and uh, keep myself in some sort of activity here at university. Because it's really fun and a lot of people underestimate how challenging it is. Uh, I love playing badminton because it's a really good combination between speed and skill. Uh, I come to the uh, badminton class because uh, I enjoy the social side of it and um, I want to get a bit fitter. What can the university do to improve the students' experience? We want to be competitive and be playing in real world, so we need good feather shuttle clubs, even though they're expensive. This is what we need to have a good team. The university can um, help promote badminton more through subsidising, as in try to get a coach and so that people can get better and so that they can compete. Perhaps we could get a coach in to train up those who want to improve um, and just mix the different abilities of people a bit more. Perhaps we could have coaching sessions occasionally. Someone comes in to um, show us how to serve properly or how, how to um, score properly um, and that would make it work even better. Team manager Callum Roberts gave us reasons as to why the university has not made badminton a priority. Uh, we provide badminton uh, as a an opportunity, a playing opportunity for students, but purely on a recreational basis. Um, uh, we actually kind of invest quite a bit of money in providing them a space to play, um, but without the student leadership and students uh, driving it forward, we wouldn't look to progress it further than its current provision. It's clear to see that badminton is very popular among students and has the potential to be one of Buckingham Sports' shining lights. Kevin Mulindwa, Buckingham News. That's it for sports, now back to the studio. Studies have shown that a third of Americans prefer their smartphones to coffee, eating, and even sex, while nearly two-thirds of women and half of men check their phones while they're actually, you know, doing it. What does it say about our partners that we seem to be so keen to substitute intimacy with technology? Alexandra Semi has the story. Technology could be killing our sex lives. A third of Americans would rather go without sex, coffee, and eating. 
than part with their mobile phones, while well, nearly half of women would rather go a month without sex than their mobile phones for the same period of time. And nearly two-thirds of women and half of men check their mobile phones during sex. The Huffington Post and online magazine Real Simple asked 3,583 women over 30 about habits when it came to their mobiles. One in 20 women surveyed sleep with their smartphones, while half could not go 15 minutes without checking their handset. Some even bought waterproof cases to check their phones in the shower. Why do you think people are substituting intimacy with technology? Research such as it is that I could find uh, indicated that this was a, a sort of PR release for an app on, online. The reason why social media platforms have been so successful is that they've tapped into something that people want and need, which is social contact. As an experiment, we asked students which they would rather go a month without, sex or their smartphone. Oh, yeah, my phone, I guess. Smartphone? I mean, I don't really use my phone that much. I would say sex. Really? Mm -hmm. Why? Um, because I'm very dependent on my cell phone. Uh, my cell phone. <laughs> sex. Sex. Perhaps couples should enforce a no technology rule in the bedroom. It's time we turn off to turn on. This is Alexandra Semi for Buckingham News. The 12th of May was officially Limerick Day. With its AABBA -A -A rhyming scheme, it's the base of many a nonsense, humorous, or downright filthy verse. We'll leave you with one that's dear to our hearts in this era of ever tighter deadlines. There once was a journo named Bright, whose writing was faster than light. She started one day in a relative way and finished the previous night. Thank you for watching. Have a nice weekend.